Hello my fellow nerdlings, I'm Sean Powers and we're going to continue our series on bash scripting. Today we're going to cover variables and arguments. Now the really cool thing about variables is that you can use them inside of a script and they can store like, like let's say you have a really long API key and you don't want to like either type it out or copy and paste it a bunch of times, you can store it as a variable and then just reference that really tiny variable later on in the bash script. If you're, if you've done any programming, you're familiar with how variables work. And then arguments are just a way that we can bring data into our script uh, from the command line and then they automatically get assigned as variables. It's actually, it's really, really cool. Uh, so I want to actually just start using variables on the command line. So let's go there right now. So if you've been around the channel before, we've done some work with variables, specifically environment variables. So we can set variables on the command line. We can see what's there. If we just type ENV, it'll show us all of our environment variables, which there's a lot of them there. So we won't actually uh, go through what all those mean. Let me clear the screen and I'm going to set a variable right on the command line. So we can say uh, thing one equals a cool thing. And now if we echo, dollar sign thing one, a cool thing, right? When you reference a variable that you've assigned, you put a dollar sign in front of it, but when you actually assign it, you don't use the dollar sign. So like we just did here, thing one equals a cool thing, and it will stay uh, assigned in our environment here, unless we were to close this terminal and log back in, and then it would be gone. Uh, so we can echo it more than once and it'll be there. However, it doesn't work automatically in child processes. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's make a, a quick little uh, sample script. So I'm just going to say um, vi test1.sh, and we'll just do this properly. We'll make it a script with a shebang up there. And now if we were to echo, what did I call it? I called it thing one, I think, thing one. So what this is going to do is it's going to echo the variable thing one, and then and then leave, right? So let's save this. Now, if we do uh, chmod, we did this in the last video. If you didn't catch that, uh, check out the first video where we talk about use or actually doing bash scripts, but uh, let's do that. And now if we do test sh, nothing happens at all. But what if we do echo thing one? Hmm, what, what's the deal? And the deal is that by default, when you assign a variable, it does not get inherited by a child process in the, the shell that you're currently in, in the terminal that you're in. And so because when we run the test one shell script, it actually creates another environment uh, and it doesn't automatically inherit things. But if you do want to have it inherit, what you do is export. And you've probably seen people do this where you type like export and we can just say export the variable, but we could actually assign it and export it at the same time. So we could say export thing one equals look mom, no assignment. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out what that means, but anyway, do that. And now if we were to execute this script, look at that because we exported it, that means that anytime we start a new process or a new shell, it's going to inherit from the existing environment that we're in. So if we want to have uh, a variable get inherited by a child, we have to export it. But there is a catch, and that catch is you absolutely cannot send it backwards, right? A child process cannot insert a variable into the parent process. There was just, it's, Bash doesn't allow that. So you can only do it going from the parent to the child, okay? So that's how uh, variable stuff works. Let's actually get rid of this uh, script. We don't need this anymore. Uh, get rid of that script and we can do unset thing one. And now if we were to echo thing one, it's gone, right? We unset it so that variable is not set anymore. But let's actually do stuff inside of a script. I just did this uh, on the command line so you can see how things are inherited and not inherited and what export does. But inside of a script, we generally use it just to hold data. So let's create a script. Let's just call it uh, touch. Let's just create a file by saying touch Yoda. Okay, that was a weird thing, weird thing to do, but we're gonna touch a file named Yoda. Press enter and now we're gonna chmod plus x Yoda, so we can just execute it once we do stuff. And now let's edit v oh, VI Yoda. Again, you can use Nano. You don't have to use VI. That's just what I tend to use. And I'm going to start out by doing bin bash. All right. And now um, let's, first of all, let's uh, set 
a variable. And now a lot of times if you see a bash variable, it's going to be all in caps, but that, that really doesn't have to be. When we just did thing one, it was not capitalized. Uh, but a lot of times, at least my personal preference is when I'm making variables in a bash script, I will do them all in caps just so that I can quickly identify that, oh, I'm referencing a variable, but they're case sensitive. So it matters if they're capital or, or lowercase, uh, but I tend to make them all uppercase just so that they stick out, if you will. Kind of like if you're doing something on a, on a database, a lot of times the database commands will be all in caps, but they don't have to be. Same sort of thing. It's just so that it looks good. So uh, that's generally what I do. Let's say M-E-S-S-A-G-E -S -S -E equals use the force. Okay, and then since that is assigned to that variable, now we can say echo and just do message. Okay, so we can just replace that uh, that variable with what we assign to it. So it's just basically like doing echo use the force. Now we could do a couple things here. We could say echo Luke comma, and then just have it replace it right there. So now you should know what we'll see here. Let's do Yoda. Luke, use the force. So what it did, it just replaced that. I mean, it's just a, a string of text and it replaced it, but we could do that over and over and reference that message as many places as we want. Let's say instead of typing it in the script though, there's a file with uh, the name of the Padawan user. Okay, so then let's say we had a, a text file. We're gonna uh, vi, let's say name.txt. And inside here is going to be the name Luke Skywalker. We'll save that. So it's just a text file with Luke Skywalker in there. And now let's look in Yoda. So now instead of assigning it like this, we could actually just say, so da, da, da. this is going back to, oops, I got to hit insert. This is going back to our last video a little bit where we can do that substitution. Now I could do back ticks, but, but check this out. See if this makes sense to you. So dollar sign. So does this make sense? What I'm doing is I am adding name.txt from the current directory, and then that is becoming a variable. And hopefully this makes sense now why we actually form it this way, because we just reference it as a variable. What is the variable? Well, it starts with a dollar sign, but instead of something that we assigned up there, we're actually assigning it the results of what's inside the parentheses. So now we should see echo, and then it should replace it with the contents of name.txt and then the message. So let's see if that's the case. Save this. Now we execute Yoda, Luke Skywalker, use the force. And that's exactly what it did. It just took the contents of that file and we could change the name in the file and then it would replace that. And that's what it would use. So we've, we've taken a, a text from a file and brought it in. We've actually uh, signed stuff from inside there. So that's cool. We could also um, export a variable. So we could do it right from the command line. We could say, uh, let's see, Padawan. I'm not sure I'm spelling this right. All you Star Wars fans here are going to probably hate me. Um, uh, what was Darth Anakin? Boy, I'm losing all my, my geek cred here, right? So Padawan equals Anakin. And we need to export this, remember? Export so that the child process can use it. So I'm going to say export Padawan equals Anakin. And now inside here, instead of this, what if we were to do echo Padawan? And now, hopefully, it inherited it. And sure enough, it says Anakin use the force because we exported that variable Padawan and we could use that inside of our bash script. Okay, so uh, that's actually actually really, really cool. But there's one more even cooler way to get information into our bash script, and that is to use arguments. Now, these are special variables. I'll just show you. Let's just go inside. VI, Yoda. All right, I'm going to get rid of all this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so we're starting with a fresh script here. And what we're going to do is just do echo. Um, let's see. Let's do echo dollar sign three dollar sign one dollar sign two. Now this is gonna make sense in a second, but 
the dollar sign and then the number tells it the argument after the command. So what I mean by that is, let's say we were to type Yoda, um, Anakin Skywalker is cool. Well, then Anakin would be assigned to dollar sign one. Skywalker would be assigned to dollar sign two is the word is would be assigned to dollar sign three. And then did I say cool? Cool would be assigned to dollar sign four. And those are automatically created and assigned when it starts up the bash script. So this is all we have to do. There's no other reference that we have to put in here and it's going to, um, echo out whatever we put on the command line. So let's get this out of here. So if we were to say Yoda, use the force. Now it's going to reply to us, force use the. <laughs> yeah, I know I did it. It was cheesy. I, I apologize. That, that was a, that was a lot of work for a tiny little sad joke. But what it did is it echoed our results to us and it took use as dollar sign one, the as dollar sign two and force as dollar sign three. And then we echoed dollar sign three and then dollar sign one and then dollar sign two. So it just changed up the order, uh, force use the just like Yoda would do. Okay. So that is, um, how you can use arguments to get information in. And, uh, it's, it's just a really powerful way that you can make your scripts more Flexible. So if you're doing something like uh, creating a ping command and you want to uh, iterate through like 192.168.1. something, you could just iterate that last octet in your bash script using like dollar sign one. You could say like uh, check out and then for the argument, you could put like one and then inside your script to do ping 192.168.1 dot dollar sign one and then it would ping whatever you did there so anyway that's just off the top of my head an example of something that you can use arguments uh to make your script more versatile now dollar sign one dollar sign two dollar sign three up to infinity there's probably a limit probably sixty five thousand or something but anyway all of that are, they're called special variables and they're already you know they exist on the bash system but there are a bunch of other super cool like automatic already created bash variables that you can use inside of a bash script and that's what we're going to cover in the next video i just wanted to give you something to play with right now so play with these so you understand how arguments work and maybe export some variables and do all that cool stuff uh, that we just covered and until next time remember to learn everything do what you love and most importantly be kind if you're enjoying this bash series and you want me to keep going quicker 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 sean <laughs> just let me know in the comments uh otherwise i have no idea if i'm making stuff that you're enjoying but until next time have a great day